I think we should start with you telling me a little bit about why you make your work. Just in a nutshell, what, why, why do you make what you make? Um, I'm not sure to have a, a very simple answer because I started very late uh, my work in sculpture after high school, before I was not really interested. And uh, my first goal was to be a, a doctor, a surgeon. And uh, for some reason, after I switched to sculpture, which was a little the same job, because first I made uh, human figures, uh, my patients. And, uh, my, uh, and uh, uh, even the scalpel I used to make anatomy studies was used in sculpture too, in a certain way, some cutting tools and these kind of things. And it's a strange similarity for me uh, between these two fields. And after I decided, when I decided to make uh, uh, some uh, work after the classic academic studies in the final school, the French final school, I uh, started to make my personal work. I discovered that I am most interested about Earth and not really people anymore. But what is my home? Uh, not my hometown, but my home, the Earth. How I am on? What's happening with this small, very strange object running in the space? Mm -hmm. And I started to think how it can be expressed in, in sculpture. And not to make sculptures as usual on the floor, but to express this idea that we are flying in the space. It wasn't not easy, it's so easy to find a solution. Flying sculptures mm -hmm. doesn't exist, <laughs> not yet. And uh, step by step, I found the solution, kind of solution. So you, you started making work with a figure, with, with people. Yeah, but, absolutely. But, you, but your work now still, I, I think, I, I, it's, it's talking about landscape where people exist. So, so is it, is it, do you still think about the, the figure? I am lucky in, in that you work? noticed it because my goal is not to, to switch the people, but making kind of strange landscapes, these kind of things. People are there in, in shadow, I mean, because you can see roads, you can see sometimes buildings, these kind of things, which means that it was built by people. Mm -hmm. And just after a while, I made several uh, human figures from clay with life models in the academy and, uh, and so forth. And I wasn't bored because I still continue sometimes to make some imprints, uh, molds on real bodies to make some kind of totems, I mm -hmm. call them totems. But I wanted to make a little more subtle the, the work and without the people, having the people in. Mm -hmm. and Showing the earth, we show people, right. necessarily, right. we are living on. Well, I'm, I'm particularly intrigued by that idea of, you use something that's recognizable, the tree, that the, the scale is, is automatically set. I, I, as a viewer, have an interesting place to enter into the sculpture. I can see where I fit with the earth. Is yeah, that your... Yes, your... But, but for the tree, it's a very specific story. Uh, I try to make it short, uh, or brief. Um, when I was 10 in Normandy, not far from Paris, my grandparents were in, in a small town and uh, next to farms and this kind of place. And in Normandy, you have several apple trees, thousands, to make cedar. Cedar. Cider. Cider, yeah. thanks. And uh, um, there's exceptionally, it's not so frequent in France, there was a cyclone, a cyclone. cyclone. And uh, uh, in one minute, Hundreds of trees were uh, taken off the earth, not broken, but taken off, which means that as a very young guy, I saw these trees simultaneously at the roots and the branches because the trees were just lying down uh, intact on the, on the ground. And I was running on the trunk uh, back and <laughs> forth from the roots to the, to the branches. That's for the first time I understood what is a tree? I mean, uh, roots and branches. Mm -hmm. And that was a very interesting, uh, very strong impression because it was a so strong cyclone. And uh, I was impressed physically about this event and even visually. Right. That was the start. And after, because I, I am from the generation who saw the images made from the space by satellites, 
I mixed all these things together. Mm -hmm. What's happening under the Earth's roots and other things, and which is hidden, what is hidden to our eyes, to discover the reality of the Earth, and even from above, from the satellites, to give a look uh, and to have a general mm -hmm. image of the whole situation. Right. Yeah, that was maybe the very briefly the uh, idea, and I developed it step by step in sculpture. Yeah. Some of, the, some of the pieces that you did here, I'm, I'm actually very intrigued by the idea of some of the trees are in a cityscape. You have mm -hmm. the cityscape. Yes. And some are just in nature. Yeah. Is there a, is there a difference in, in how you approach the, because the man, people are more evident in the cityscape, but not so much in, in nature. I, I, I'm interested in the, how you see it. Do you see a difference between those? Not really different because mostly even in, in the real landscapes, um, I make some allusion to some human work around. It's organized. Right. And uh, um, no, I don't know really. Sometimes I'm a little lost. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> but well, uh, I, just... uh, I mean, I try to be very conscious when I work because when you work with steel, it's necessary to build up as a building from the foundation to the, to the roof uh, to know what you will do, because the material is expensive, the process is very slow, and, uh, and I am ready in my head totally with the subject from the beginning. But sometimes, some surprises. Okay. And this is why I say I can be lost sometimes. I have no answer, real answer to your question. Landscape or city landscape, urban landscape, for me it's the same. Okay. In the same way. Yeah. You, you answered the question there. Uh, what... what um, how do you start with a piece? How, how do you, we, we talked a little bit ago about, about drawing, and, and, yeah. and a lot of people draw their ideas out, but how do you start with an idea? Do you just imagine it and then start building, or yes. is there a planning stage? Yes, yes, I prefer to start just thinking about the subject, building up mentally the whole piece, and when I'm ready, I start buying the material, and I start always with new, clean steel pieces. I don't like to use uh, scraps because um, I want to be really free as a writer with a white page and uh, to transform by myself all the material. And uh, uh, usually I don't make any drawing because the drawing is not three-dimensional by definition. And I, I think to put the effort to make a fake three-dimensional drawing, to imagine how it will be, Maybe it's better just to keep it in mind and to start. Sometimes it's not good because when you get a commission, people need to have some hints, sure. what about? A model. And usually I make a three-dimensional model. Mm -hmm. Even if they ask drawings in competitions, I make the model. I can't really represent a sculpture through a drawing. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's difficult. Right. I don't know how it works for you, but... Uh, well, uh, I, I, I find that sculpture is not unless you're using clay, but it's not yeah. a very immediate process. It's, it takes time. And so yes. for me, it seems like there, there often is a certain amount of planning that happens with drawing, uh -huh. but not always. And I'm just interested, yeah. interested in how you, you get to an idea or mm -hmm. a visual object, because it takes time to plan and cut. Yeah, and no, because well. when I discovered your work, and that this is important to me, because if I am in a foreign country or somewhere else than my hometown, uh, it's important to discover other people, other way to work. Mm -hmm. And when I discovered your way to work from wood, a lot of similarity and a lot of difference. The similarity, which is not so frequent now, is that we make both totally handmade work. And this is very important to me, because now I see so many people working from just a, a small catch giving to some, uh, in some workshops, and some other people will make the job. And this is why I was amazed about your work, because it's really handmade 100% as I do it. Mm -hmm. This is my goal to keep this kind of work up and to have the pretension that, to say that art is, artwork must be done really by the artist. Can you, can you elaborate on, on why you use steel? I mean, I, I, I like the tree form, I use tree things, but I, I tend to use wood. But why, why, would you, why do you use steel to say what you need to say? First of all, I was amazed when I saw that uh, 
both of us are working about branches, trees. It was just a, a, a nice discovery uh, kind of competition. <laughs> but uh, uh, still, maybe for two reasons. Uh, I was saying about my childhood and how I discovered the trees in a certain way. Uh, now there's another old story. When I was an assistant after my uh, fine art school studies uh, next to a, a, an artist, uh, just to make my money. Mm -hmm. uh, I was an assistant for a couple of years. Uh, he was working with metal. And I discovered that metal is very safe, very resistant, very strong. Mm -hmm. And I saw several people making, uh, also in the art school, from plaster, for clay, in ceramics, and these kind of things, uh, work. And uh, uh, to me, it seemed to be too fragile. I wanted something strong. And uh, the first reason, probably, is to respect the collector. Very, very early, I understood that if some people will like it, even I didn't know the word collector, just if something like my work and get it, to give something which will stay safely in this other place. And this, the steel is good for that. Sure. Yeah, okay. it's really, it's that. and even the second reason, not too expensive, Relatively expensive, but not too expensive, much less than bronze, for yeah, example. Absolutely. And I can build from zero to 100% the whole work by myself. That was important. To not uh, see some difference between my conception and the result. Mm -hmm. When I went in the foundry for two or three pieces, five other people worked on. And it's not exactly the same as I wanted. The color, the texture, it changes. In steel, you can control the whole process. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there, there's some, something that the steel adds to, I mean, you're, you're mimicking something that's very alive, but you're using a, an industrial cold material. Is there something conceptually that, that, that connects the steel to the sculptures? Um, uh, first of all, the resistance is very important, but the other thing is it's really amazing that a very thin flame can make, uh, can transform the, the, the iron, the steel, um, as a clay. Sure. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. For example, on this small piece, I built it from rods, small rods, and after, with liquid uh, uh, metal, I made some drops on the surface to make the texture. And I worked as with the clay, except that it's a little risky yeah. uh, sometimes. That's it. And uh, yeah, yeah, I like the strongness, the possibility to work um, very, very, it's a very versatile mm -hmm. tool, the, the uh, oxyacetone torch. Sure. Yeah, sure. Mm. Okay, good. Well, the, the, uh, one of the reasons I like what you do is, I mean, it's similar to what I do as far as tree parts. I, I'm, I'm often thinking about the connection to the earth, so the space where we stand and what's below us, which is very important to yeah. me. But it also it could be a, a metaphor and a representation of connection to a spiritual realm. Do you, do you, do you think of it in terms like that at all, of, of um, connections to life in a bigger sense? I'm not sure. Yeah. Not sure. I am really, um, we have a French expression, uh, feet on the ground. I don't know if it works in English, but probably yes. The... Um, um, ground and underground, mm -hmm. in a certain way. Uh, it's, it means that uh, my background was this in my family um, scientific, which means that I'm really uh, kind of, I try to be objective sure. and to see what's happening as under a microscope. Uh, that was my first tool, a microscope, to discover what is in, a, in for example, a dirty water, suddenly under the microscope, you see several living species, and it's just incredible. Mm -hmm. That was maybe the other reason to look under. And you see, surface, branches, you can turn it. Sure. And even Similar. to realize that our neighbors on the other side are just <laughs> like that. And, and it's very similar also. The roots are very similar to the branches and the opposite way, which means that this is a whole observation without any, I think, without any spiritual background. 
but as you know, we don't know exactly what we are doing. We try <laughs> to understand what we are doing. I try to, to be very conscious about my work and the subjects, but maybe. Um, to, be, to be clear, I don't believe in God, which means that when I told that I am feet on ground, it means that just now and what I can see and understand right. is here. Right. Yeah. Well, I think uh, sometimes what artists do is they, ex they expose things that people don't necessarily see. And I, to me, I'm just fascinated with, that, with that, those layers of meanings. I, I, think that, I think roots could be metaphors for lots of things, such as history, personal family history. Roots Absolutely. And, and so I, think, I think to me that there's lots of, lots of directions for a viewer Yes. To, to see this and interact and read what, what's happening there. Yes, now, I, and I'm quite sure that this part must be hidden in, me, in, in my mind also. Mm -hmm. Roots, it's very important. And is it an allusion to my family, my ancestors? Uh, all these things are possible, probably, mm -hmm. because everybody uh, are interested about the origins and all, the, all these things. And it's not very innocent when you are showing roots. You are right. Yeah, you are right. Well, yeah. it, I think to me also there's something even more optimistic, hopeful for the future because trees, they grow out, they gain from the past, mm -hmm. but then they also propagate new seeds to start over again. So yeah. to me, there's, 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 I think the pieces that I've seen, maybe there's more, you have more up above than down below. And to me, that's almost the, like a spreading your branches or you're spreading out. It's, yes. it's kind of interesting too. Yes, but at the same time, this small metal piece, normally I put the things on wall, mm -hmm. which means that, again, flying over the earth. Uh, for myself, it's a very interesting uh, way to see our place where we live. And even for the viewer, I oblige the viewer to imagine that there are pilots above the earth, and it's come on the wall that way, uh, understanding that the, the sculpture anymore, in my conception, is on the wall, showing the idea that the, the earth is running in the space. It's in a very artificial way, because it's hanging on sure, the wall, sure. but I hope that it suggests the idea of this flying potato in the, in the, <laughs> in the space. And uh, when I make the roots, obviously, you have to go a little laterally to the sculpture to discover what's happening under. Absolutely. But normally this is the way I show it. And I use shadows, cast shadows, because from above these branches can be maybe some other stuff. Sure. And I help the viewer, and even graphically it's interesting to me, to have a cast shadow of the tree to see from above, to see, thanks to the shadow, the whole shape of the tree. And it's a certain way to create what I call, I try to call it a global image of a situation. To have everything in one look in front of you. When you, when you first got here, and the, fir the first time we met, we were, we were talking over in, in uh, Cafe Tempo, uh, and you were introducing me to your work in a, in a way. And uh, you, you had talked about a lot about your studio space. But you also I, talked uh, about how the, the landscape was building up around there. Um, the old buildings were, were going away, but they were creating new layers of earth. And yes. you, talked about, you talked about that when you were talking about your work. The, the idea of layers, to me, was, was pretty yes. fascinating, too. So can you, can you address how maybe the current events of where you live are affecting your work or have shown up in your work? The first part is true, the second a little less. I mean, it was just incredible because my conception to show the earth it was already uh, made from years, for years, and suddenly I got studios in a very specific part of Paris where they built a whole new area. And I saw digging the earth, uh, making the roots of the new buildings, mm -hmm. kind of, and it was just a nice coincidence because I could see in a very large scale uh, my conception uh, day by day. But it didn't change my view because I was already on that way. Yeah. But it was amazing to see it in a large scale, to see the layers coming up mm -hmm. uh, month by month, a whole new district in the southeast of, uh, of Paris. And the new National Library, and even the library, just quickly, 
that was interesting because the architect, a young architect who was at the same time in the, uh, in the um, art school as me, um, so not so young now, <laughs> <laughs> this guy made the library with a big hole in the middle of four buildings with a very deep garden under the buildings in between the buildings making layers. It's interesting, something happening, some people are trying to, to work that way, connecting different layers. And uh, even I had a big battle for this area because uh, they wanted to destroy my studios. Right. And it took a good time. But uh, Coming back just for a moment to here, my experience here in, uh, in uh, uh, Kansas City, uh, with yours especially, it was a very interesting way to change a little my work. Because looking at your work, you told me that you are trying to make some uh, amazing work. Is it the right word in English? Some uh, funny uh, things. Uh, Absurd. Uh, yes, I, something like that. This is the right word, and it was a little surprising to me because I try to make to be very strict and very uh, uh, to make the work uh, in a very strict way. And it helped me to understand that it's maybe good to be a little more flexible, a little more free. Mm -hmm. And even with the students, I saw this that right. uh, they make several very different things. And I made here a new sculpture. Um, and you showed me how to make a foundry, in foundry, a part of the sculpture, which is very new to me, which means that there was a steelwork, including a piece made in foundry. Mm -hmm. And this will help me probably to make something different after. Well, I was curious about how the, 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 your, the current events around your studio influenced your work. I mean, I, I work observationally. I see what, what, I, what I think are absurdities, mm -hmm. but then I make artwork about those. I, I, do th I do believe that there is a part of what I do that's all already there. But I was just curious to know how that, how that might have influenced your work. But, I'll, but also, I, I think, oftentimes I'll be making work, and, and like you said before, we don't know everything mm -hmm. about why we're making what we make. But uh, and occasionally, I will see something that, that turns on a light in my head that, that says, maybe that's why yeah. I make that. Or, or there's, a, there's a connection that, that excites me and wants me, yeah, I yeah. want to make more. Yeah, 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 sure. And uh, for example, with this last piece I made here, um, I think that I made a, a, a small step uh, uh, in my evolution. And there's a saying in French, um, travel forms useless. Uh, maybe in another word, I can say without the useless that travel from my work, and this is why I was happy to be here for a while, and maybe I'll be back. Sure. <laughs> hey, you know, if, if an artist doesn't allow themselves to grow and evolve, then I, I feel that the work oftentimes becomes sort of soulless or just empty at a certain point. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious to know, I'm curious, anxious to see how your work changes in the future, and, and can you Talk about maybe how this trip might have changed your work uh, or, uh, or influenced how you might approach it in the future. Like no, the probably, Apple. because the usual word for French people or European people that we are maybe too much Cartesians, if I pronounce well the word, and uh, too square. And uh, uh, maybe this is the most important event in just uh, four months mm -hmm. to maybe to understand that it's possible to be a little more um, uh, free in the work and not to focus 100% on a very understandable message. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes just to make, uh, as you said, or absurd or funny or, or something lighter work. And maybe I will start to think about yeah. because uh, for years I wanted to be really um, about a message, about a story, as I told, all the story about the earth and everything. But now it's already done. I made several pieces in that field. And maybe it, it could be good to try some colors, some uh, uh, to evolve some, some uh, uh, funny pieces in these cultures. Well, I, I think there is a, 
a, a balance that needs to be addressed too. You talked earlier about the collector. You realized mm -hmm. early on the collector, you want to make something that is going to last for the collector, but you also, we are trained kind of in the art field to make something that's consistent. So once you start selling something that there's a consistency, so it's, you develop a personal language yeah. that is recognizable from piece to piece. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel some of the more interesting work is, is how that, that changes and evolves and, and grows. Yeah, but there's another point, maybe I don't know if you agree. First of all, we work for ourselves <laughs> for years. And when you must make your life with something, if you want to continue this personal research, is becoming a, a product for the market. And it's another step, very different step, because you are thinking about who will get it, what will be the size of the work, is it marketable, and it's becoming a little different. And it's a beginning of the professionalism, but at the same time, the beginning sometimes of a certain disillusion, because it's not Absolutely. already just for yourself. It's already for somebody, and you, you think sometimes about what the other will like, and uh, this is bad. And I try to not think about it, just to make my work as I wish, and uh, this is why I make very few commissions, not only because I have few commissions, but I don't run behind commissions, to be free, as free as possible. This is the hardest way, obviously, but I like to think this way, and uh, my former master, one of my former masters, Jean Dubuffet, uh, who never went any, in any school, art school, uh, told me, you see, I just build up my way looking on different things without a professor, and I built my own work, and Jean Dubuffet is not the best, the, the worst uh, uh, artist. Uh, I say this because it means that if you follow your precise idea, if you can keep this uh, way, maybe it's more honest. And more rewarding, too, yes. as a sculptor. As yes. 